So patients with cirrhosis are often critically ill, requiring hospitalization in intensive care units or ICUs. We found that patients whose etiology of liver disease is secondary to alcohol have worse survival following ICU discharge, both within the hospital as well as at 30 days compared to patients with other etiologies. Second, we find that applicability and predictive power of the quick sequential organ failure assessment or the QSOFA score, which is a bedside tool to use to predict sepsis, is limited in patients with cirrhosis as compared to general population. My name is Chan Song Choi. I'm a third year internal medicine resident at the Mayo Clinic campus in Rochester. The article's title is Relationship Between Etiology of Cirrhosis and Survival Amongst Patients Hospitalized in Intensive Care Units. The article will appear in February 2022 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I have had the privilege of working with numerous co-authors on this article, with the senior author being my mentor, Dr. Douglas Simonetto. Patients with cirrhosis are in a complex state of immune dysregulation, previously delineated as cirrhosis-associated immune dysfunction. And we know that alcohol has a detrimental effect on both innate and adaptive immune system. The aims of our study were threefold. First, we aim to find whether there are differences in survival outcomes in critically ill patients with alcohol-associated cirrhosis admitted to ICU compared to patients with other etiology of cirrhosis. And two, to explore whether abstinence improves survival outcomes among those with alcohol-associated cirrhosis. And finally, we also explore the applicability and predictive power of QSOFA score in predicting sepsis in patients with cirrhosis. We found that those with alcohol-associated cirrhosis had worse survival outcome with higher mortality in the hospital following ICU stay, as well as at 30 days of follow-up. The finding was actually seen after adjustment for their severity of liver disease, severity of their critical illness, as well as the presence of sepsis. In addition, alcohol use history prior to ICU admission was found in the majority of our patients, which enabled us to explore the effect of abstinence on outcomes of critically ill patients with alcohol-associated cirrhosis. Surprisingly, our study failed to detect any survival difference based on the abstinence, which was just find as alcohol cessation of at least minimum of six months at both hospitalization as well as short-term follow-up at 30 days. We believe that this finding perhaps reflect the need for longer abstinence duration to translate into more significant survival outcomes among patients with alcohol-associated cirrhosis and also signals the chronicity of immune dysfunction related to alcohol use. So our findings have two important clinical applications and implications. One is to emphasize alcohol cessation among patients with cirrhosis and to ensure that patients have the appropriate resources and assistance from clinicians to abstain from alcohol in the long run. Second, our study points to the need of having better bedside clinical tools to predict sepsis to ensure timely intervention with appropriate therapies in critically ill patients with cirrhosis. Given our knowledge of increased mortality risk among patients with alcohol-associated cirrhosis, as well as the general poor performance of bedside tools for early detection of sepsis, clinicians should have a lower threshold to initiate workup for infection, and also to consider higher level of cares for these patients. Hopefully, this will translate into better patient outcomes following intensive care unit admissions. Our findings indicate an independent effect of alcohol-associated etiology on outcomes among critically ill patients with cirrhosis. This increased risk persists up to six months of sustained alcohol abstinence, and it is not related to higher rates of sepsis in alcohol-associated cirrhosis as previously shown. Thus, the next step is to determine the exact drivers of higher mortality in this vulnerable population and to implement effective interventions for better outcomes. So we invite the readers to explore the article in detail to first learn about the differences of outcomes in critically ill patients with cirrhosis so we can better take care of patients who are currently hospitalized in intensive care units. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism 
of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.